rapidly at which electrons leave the electrolyte and enter the external circuit because electrons are leaving because the electrons are leaving the electrolyte are going up to the external circuit and on the other hand we can define the cathode as the rod at which electrons are leaving so we see electrons are leaving the external circuit and enter so they are entering entering to the electrolyte as simple as that So we can continue by defining some of the terms that we use in electrolysis. We have the conductors and we can define that as the substances that allow electricity to pass through them, well as the non-conductors as the substances that do not allow electricity to pass through them. Uh, we can give examples of each. Uh, under these examples we can have the conductors can be divided into uh, into conductors that are in solid form uh, into solid form and these are examples of those we have the metals uh, we have the metals uh, we can use different conductors for example the platinum platinum rods uh, we can use uh, copper rods uh, we can use a uh, graphite uh, and so on and so forth well as we have other conductors that are in liquid liquid form uh, under these ones we have uh, our liquid liquid conductors under these we have uh, mineral acids amino acids uh, we have bases uh, uh, here we have uh, for example we have HCl uh, we have hydrochloric uh, uh, sulfuric acid uh, we have bases for example uh, sodium hydroxide then we have salts uh, also this uh, we have for example sodium uh, chloride and so on and so forth uh, those are examples of the conductors that we have well as the nanoconductors uh, examples of nanoconductors uh, we can say that you have wood uh, we have rubber uh, we have paper, of course, paper, paper from wood, uh, and uh, we have plastics. Mm, uh, we can look at the electrolytes, uh, and we define electrolyte as an ionic compound which conducts uh, electric current in aqueous solution or in molten state and is decomposed by it. Uh, in electrolyte or in any compound, we have the particles that are responsible for the conduction of uh, electricity, and these particles are called ions. So, uh, the any compound gives us the ions that are responsible for the conduction of electricity. For example, if you look at uh, if you look at sodium sodium chloride, sodium chloride is an ionic compound, and it will give us uh, Mm, the sodium ions and the chloride ions. These ions are responsible for the conduction of electric current. Example number two, we can look at uh, sodium sodium hydroxide that gives us the sodium ions and the mm, hydroxide ions. Uh, this exam, these ions are responsible for the conduction uh, of electric mm, current uh, in, in, in a solution. So we can look at types of electrolyte. For example, number one, we have non electrolyte. This is number one. And we define non electrolytes as compounds that do not conduct electricity. Examples include we have ethanol. Ethanol is an example of a non electrolyte. Type number two, we have weak electrolytes. And you can simply define weak electrolytes as a compound that slightly, uh, that is slightly ionized in dilute solution and in molten uh, state. Uh, these weak electrolytes have very few mobile ions. Why? Because they are slightly ionized in solution. Uh, we can give examples of weak electrolytes. Mm, number one, we have uh, carbonic acid. We have carbonic acid. Uh, carbonic acid. Uh, aqueous uh, slightly ionizes we use the uh, sign or the sign for slight ionization 
as a double or one arrow facing in the forward uh, uh, direction and the other in the backward direction to give us a hydrogen ions and the carbonate the carbonate ions this one simply means this one simply means that the uh, electrolyte uh, ionizes slightly to give us the hydrogen ions and the carbonate ions so ca carbonic acid hydrogen ions and ca carbonate ions concurrently uh, occur in uh, solution uh, example number two we have example number two we have ethanoic acid ethanoic acid uh, CH3 COOH at aqueous uh, slightly also ionizes uh, to give us uh, mm, the hydrogen ions uh, aqueous uh, plus the ethanoid the ethanoid mm, the ethanoid ions also aqueous it also slightly ionizes uh, I said before that we use the double arrow or uh, arrow that faces in the opposite directions to represent weak electrolytes we can also have another example we can also have another example uh, of ammonium hydroxide example number three we have ammonium example number three we have ammonium hydroxide that also slightly ionizes to give us the ammonium ions uh, aqueous and then the hydroxy ions also aqueous uh, example number three that we can talk about we have uh, strong electrolytes and we can simply define strong electrolytes as compounds which completely ionize in dilute solutions and in molten state uh, these ones have more uh, free ions than the weak electrolytes uh, examples we have salts such as sodium chloride example number one we have sodium chloride is a salt uh, aqueous that ionizes completely so the difference here is that we use a full arrow that faces in the forward uh, direction uh, the difference from uh, the weak electrolytes here we use the double arrows one facing in the backward one facing in the forward direction but here we use a full arrow that faces in the forward direction so this one gives us the sodium ions aqueous and the chloride ions also aqueous in example number two we have uh, hydrochloric acid aqueous this one also gives is a mineral acid uh, gives us hydrogen ions uh, and the chloride ions these ones are strong electrolytes as simple as that